Hi, I'm Joe Ferrace. Welcome to Joe's Movie Club. And today we're doing mini reviews of two different films that have almost nothing in common but a couple of critical elements. The first is the creative work done by the directors of both films is way beyond the typical genres that they represent. The second part is that the stars, the protagonist of the, each film, gives a bravado performance and is just one of their best and very unusual for both actors. So let's get started and talk about Lyle Lyle Crocodile and Amsterdam coming up now. I think most people will be surprised by Lyle Lyle Crocodile. It's ostensibly a family movie, but it, I think it can be enjoyed by everybody. I think that's because of the directors. Josh Gordon and Will Speck approached this film, not like they were making a movie for kids, like it was a Disney movie or something like that, but they approached it like they were going to make a good movie. So there was a lots of touches in the film, the way they shot it, and the performances they get from the actors that really transcend the kind of family movie that its structure would kind of indicate it would be. So kudos to directors. Terrific thing. It is beautiful to look at. It's colorful. It's bright. It's crisp. It really has a real high quality look. I watched it on a Blu-ray. I'm not sure if there's a 4K available, and I'm sure that would only look even better. But the star of the movie is who only makes appearances kind of off and on, but he's there at the beginning. And that's Javier Bardem. Bardem, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. But he's known for performances like being a Bond villain or worse, the serial killer, the crazed lunatic in No Country for Old Men. But here is a different side of his personality. I'm guessing he made this for his kids because he can take his kids to see this movie. And he is absolutely fabulously charming, funny, over the top. He plays a magician that is not very successful, even though the magic tricks that you'll see are pretty fabulous. The guy really is a good magician, but he has kind of a, he's a tough luck story about, there's kind of a subplot that makes an appearance but why he has to at one point leave town and he shows up once kind of battered and bruised and I have a feeling maybe those sections were chopped out of the, the movie or whatever and to keep the focus on A, the crocodile and the kid who's a star. Now while the, you always have to have the parents, they move into New York, the kid's the feeling, you know, he's alienated, he's not fitting into the big city and all that stuff. You know, like every other movie that has kids in it. Parents are Constance Wu and Scoot McNary. Now, Scoot McNary, if you may recall, was on the wonderful AMC series. At least the first two seasons were wonderful. Third was okay. Uh, halt and Catch Fire, where he played a tortured computer engineer. And he's a really terrific actor who's pretty much unused in this film. Constance Wu, on the other hand, has a scene with the crocodile where she's singing and dancing in the kitchen while they're cooking something. Turns out she's a chef and she writes cookbooks. And so her and Lyle are dancing and singing. So you see, Lyle, unlike a lot of talking animal movies, doesn't talk. He just sings. And the songs he sings are great. And the singer is Shawn Mendes who does a wonderful job as the singing crocodile. The songs, on the other hand, are written by the talented team who brought you the songs from The Greatest Showman. Now, if you haven't seen The Greatest Showman, which is kind of uh, loosely based on the life of P.T. Barnum, you should. This is a, it's a classic musical with really, really fabulous music. And uh, Hugh Jackman is P.T. Barnum just it's a wonderful movie, and the songs are great. The songs in this film have more of a pop orientation, and they're okay for the uh, original uh, songs that, that, that are used. There's a couple non-original songs, especially one at the end that you will love.
I know I did anyway. So anyway, this only works if the kid is good. And the kid is Winslow Fegley. And he plays Josh, the little alienated kid who makes a friend of Lyle the crocodile. And they set out all kinds of nocturnal adventures and dumpster diving and singing and dancing and having a great time. And you'll have a great time too with this movie. It is just charming in a way that Mary Poppins is charming without all of the lot of the fall roll. It's a very, very simple little story. At the same time, with wonderful performance by Javier Bardem and uh, Winston Fegley as, as the kid. And the crocodile. Hey, this crocodile can act. It was all done with motion capture, if you watch the little extras on the, on the disc. It's a beautiful, fun film that the whole family can enjoy. And I really, really, if you're looking for a movie to watch with your kids, please sit down and watch Lyle Lyle Crocodile. You'll laugh, you'll have a good time. And what more can you want from a movie? Amsterdam couldn't be more different than Lyle Lyle Crocodile. It's more of a grown-up movie. It's a movie about three friends who meet in World War I and go on to uh, different parts of their life while the two male leads stay friends involved in veterans affairs. And the movie kind of revolves around World War I veterans. And some of it is based on a true story of a plot that was designed to overthrow the government of Franklin Roosevelt in the early 30s. If you're not familiar with that, I'll put a couple of links. If you're into history, you might want, to, might want to read about that. But the movie makes it real by, at the very end, uh, during the credits, is they run a split screen of, of, of a news, a real newsreel from 1930, whatever it was, 36, I think. And Robert De Niro plays the role of General Smedley Butler, who is, and they do the same speech. On the right hand side of the screen, you hear the real guy. On the left hand side, you see De Niro. And they're giving the same speech at the same time to let you know that this, the backstory for this whole plot was based on facts. Now, the movie starts out kind of like a mystery. They get hired by a semi-mysterious woman played by none other than Taylor Swift, who I'm really pleased to report. She's only in the film for the very early scenes in the film, but she's really good and has a wonderfully retro look. But the star of the movie, and like I mentioned in the run-up to this thing, is Christian Bale. Okay, Christian Bale. He's Batman. And here he plays an eccentric doctor who is wounded in World War I and goes on to dedicating his life to helping veterans who were wounded and injured in the war. This is not a comedy, although there are funny moments. The film was directed by David O. Russell. So I really, really liked his film Three Kings, one of the better Gulf War movies I think ever made with George Clooney and Ice Cube and uh, Mark Wahlberg. It's, a, it's an interesting film. Also in the movie is John David Washington, who is incredible in Tenet, which a lot of people didn't see, but I would recommend that you see it. He was also amazing in the HBO series Ballers. I mean, he was magnificent in that role. And that's why I first saw him, I didn't realize that he's Denzel Washington's son. He is wonderful in this movie. As is Margot Robbie, who you're used to seeing as a blonde, you'll see her as a brunette. And let me tell you, all of the women in this, and that goes for uh, Margot Robbie, Taylor Swift, and a couple of the other women who are in there, including a very small appearance by Zoe Saldana. I mean, all of them look absolutely beautiful and stunning. They, the women actors must love David O. Russell because he makes them look like movie stars. It starts off, as, like I said, as a mystery, and, and then somebody gets killed, and then another person's killed, and and then it all turns out this is all has to do with veterans of World War One, and a plot to overthrow the government. And it kind of loses its way in the third act. This is not a great movie, but this is a really fun, watchable movie. Not fun the way La La Crocodile is fun, but it's so charming. It's, it was basically set in 1933. 
So it has a wonderful vintage look and classical Hollywood kind of a look. And, and Russell is a pretty fair director. There's a couple of other performances in there that are really worth mentioning. One is Mike Myers as an MI6 agent. And he he's actually recreating what he did in uh, uh, Inglorious Bastards, if you saw that film. Uh, he has a small part in Glorious Bowser's. He has a little bit bigger part here. And he, he's really, really great in it. Also, really, one in one of the more surprising roles is Rami Malek. I didn't really like the film he did about Freddie Mercury, mainly because of the liberties that uh, the the script took with uh, Freddie Mercury's life. And it's 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 more interesting than the film... Rami Malek was really great, but in this movie, he shows a different side of himself. He has a mustache, a lot of facial hair in this uh, movie. You'll see uh, John David Washington with no hair, some hair, a little beard. He looks great in all of them. And and uh, Christian Bale has crazy hair with a strange little goatee that looks like He's like a starving artist and not a doctor who's trying to help people. Anyway, R Rami Malek shows up with his mustache, and he looks very, very 40s Hollywood glamour. And, and he's resonating his voice as a very smooth and warm. I won't ruin, the, no spoilers here. He is absolutely fabulous in this part. And as, from the first second he's on the screen, you think, wow, that's Rami Malek? What's, what's, this is great. It's kind of like when Bob Dylan changed the style of his voice from what he did to what he's doing. And everybody thought, wow. And that's the same kind of thing you'll find with Rami Malek here. He's, he's great. In fact, everybody in this film, including these other beautiful actresses who I can't remember their names. Maybe I'll throw them down here so you can look them up or maybe you already know who they are. So this is a film... That is kind of a near miss, but it's also a film that's really watchable. It looks really good. It has a nice mood. It has a nice texture. The people are acting their socks off, especially Christian Bale. I mean, as much as uh, Javier Bardem goes over the top, Christian Bale kind of gets into a little bit of that, but he, he's so watchable that whenever he's on screen, you're like riveted to this guy. He is just that good. He is an amazing actor. I think that maybe he will go on to being known for more than just being Batman. Although I really like him as Batman and think he's the second best Batman, but we'll talk about that in another video. So anyway, I recommend you pick up a copy of Amsterdam. It, the reason why it's called Amsterdam is at the beginning of the film after the war, the, the three of them go to Amsterdam and, and just enjoy life until Christian Bale decides he wants to go back to New York because he misses his wife, who really isn't returning the favor. And so it's... Uh, it's kind of like there's a lot of twists and turns and pieces and parts that you think, what the heck is that doing there? And then it would be better if they cut it out. But it adds to the charm of the film, and it's really worth a watch, and I think you'll have a good time. And maybe you'll even learn something if you go and look up who Smelly Butler was and the, what he was involved in and how he tried to stop this overthrow of the government. So... It has a message, it has a charm, it has a look, and it has great acting. So be sure to catch Amsterdam. What's coming up? I wish I could tell you. I've been looking at some, uh, some films. I've been thinking about some films to pick up. Unlike a lot of uh, channels here on YouTube where people get sent giant boxes of videos, uh, I have to actually buy mine. And so, and some I get from the library, like La La Crocodile. Some, and so, because I have to buy them, I have to be selective because I don't have an unlimited budget. So I don't know what's coming up next, but I will promise you I will do my darndest to make it something interesting. So thanks again for watching. If you have it in your heart, please click the subscribe button. And I really would appreciate that. Thank you so much.
people like it because it's downright charming. It's wonderful. It has a kind of a Mary Poppins feel to it. But you, what, you can't 